Hey, Chris. After a season here, what reflecting back, what was it like to play for the Warriors? Um, it was a unique experience. You know what I mean? I'm I'm glad I got an opportunity to play with the guys that I did, get a chance to uh, meet new people, um, play for an organization I never would have imagined I played for. But, uh, you know, I'm grateful for the experience. And, um, yeah. That being said, if you had an opportunity to, to play again here next year, is that something you'd like to exercise? I mean, I'm open to, to all, you know, things. I think right now what's on my mind probably is getting back, spending some time with my family, you know, seeing, uh, seeing them. Um, I'm forever grateful to the organization or whatnot and how much they allowed me to get back and see my family as much. Um, it's a big summer, you know. Um, our team came up, came up short. Uh, but I, I, you know, it was a it was a tough season. You know, another hand surgery, hand surgery num number five. But uh, all in all, it was it was fun battling with these guys. I just um, hoped and hope at some point I can get out there and uh, play and uh, try to make a bigger impact. Chris, compared to maybe your expectations coming on this team, what's something that might have surprised you about being around this uh, organization? Um, <laughs> it, it was a lot of surprise, like good surprises. Uh, man, everything is first class. I tell you that much from from everything. Uh, big shout out to Eric Howes and the training staff, to Raymond and his crew, and all these these uh, the different people and the different personnel. You know, when you talk about it, it's a it's a players' league. They really treat you like that over here, and it was uh, it was really nice to see. We obviously know the storyline about it becoming your first time ever coming off the bench. Steve really commended you on everything that as far as how you took your role, starter, bench, anything. Do you have a desire as far as whether it's here or anywhere else to be a starter, or does that matter front of mind for you? I think for me, I showed the ability to adapt and change, you know what I mean? But first and foremost, uh, I'm a competitor, right? So um, I want to hoop, and I just, I just love to play. I love to play, I love to contribute, and just, um, I think that's, you know, what it is for me. So I think it's a big summer. You know, I gotta get back to work, get back to, um, you know, get back to work. Hey Chris, you said uh, in, when you were talking to Anthony that you got a chance, you tell people you got a chance to look behind the curtain. And tell us a little bit more about what you saw in terms of, you know, what this team is like on a locker room level, uh, what the coaching is like, management? Uh, you might have to hoop yourself to get all that stuff, but I mean, I, th I think for me when I said that, um, it was more so about really getting to know Dre, Steph, and Clay. You know, obviously Loon too, but especially them three, given the amount of times we'd have competed and played against each other. Um, and just seeing, uh, just seeing everything, you know what I mean? As far as this arena, obviously I played most of my games at Oracle, seeing the fans, seeing seeing everything, you know, and uh, it was good to have a lot of the conversations that we had. And then also just an appreciation, right? Because although we battled against each other time and time again, there's an appreciation for the, for the work that goes in day in and day out. And um, that's, that's sort of what I meant about that. <clears throat> We know um, you got to talk to your family and everything, but we know that you want to keep playing and you don't want to retire. Um, what motivates you to keep going, you know, at this stage of your career? Um, just, I love it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I've been playing basketball since I was four years old, and there's nothing um, other than my family that brings me more joy, right, than the hard work and all that stuff that goes into it. And um, yeah, that's that's why you know we get to play you know a child's game and and say it's my way of life and take care of my family. So uh, that's that's why I do it. That's why I continue to do it. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be back ready for next season. And this was this was the first time in probably like 14, 15 years for you that you're not in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, how much does the way this season ends sour your experience here? And I guess how much of a priority is 
you know, getting back to the playoffs for you? Yeah, uh, don't feel good, you know, but it is what it is. Um, I get a chance to uh, travel and uh, be an AAU dad, make some of my daughter's volleyball games, and um, a little bit of a longer break than usual, but it, it, it is what it is. You had a chance to see probably the best view of anybody of this Warriors team from the very beginning, like 12 years ago, when they were first starting to go to the playoffs and stuff like that. So you've watched them all along the way, and now you've been part of it. Does this seem like a, a, a team, a dynasty that's in a major transition point, or how do you look at it? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I played against them 12 years ago, but I was on my own journey. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, like I said, I have a, a, a deep appreciation for, for Steph, uh, shooting and training with him day in and day out, dealing with, you know, so many off the court things, you know, just life, you know, um, appearances, all the different things that I know he has going on with Dre, you know, the the season that he had dealing with, with a lot and same thing with Clay. So I think there's an appreciation for those guys dealing with all the things that they've had to deal with over the past, I don't know how many years that, um, uh, I'm grateful that I got a chance to know them on more than a basketball level. You know, I really got a chance to know who they are, and uh, I appreciate them for that. This seemed like it felt from the outsider's viewpoint that for you this was more than just a passing through season, you know, just another stop on the, the long journey that maybe it was. Yeah, I don't really operate like that. <laughs> you know, any situation I go into, I'm, uh, I'm all in. You know, it was like that. Um, in Houston, it was like that in OKC. You know, I think a lot of times people talk about that season in OKC, we weren't going to do it, but I've always tried to make an impact wherever I was, you know, so, you know, we, we, we came up short here this year, but uh, I'm excited about the summer and getting back to work and seeing, seeing what's what. Everyone talked about what a great mentor you have been for some of the young guys. What's the, how do you describe the growth in the young guys, whether it's a BP, Trace, JK, Emoji? Yeah, it's funny, man, because I, I might have said it, you know, I don't know, all these years we running together. I don't know if I said it here this year or I said it when I got to OKC when everybody always talk about mentor, and I'd be like, that's all good and well, but I like to hoop, <laughs> you know. Um, but for me, um, I'm not like a hoarder of knowledge. You know what I'm saying? I've had so many people who have sort of mentored me, taught me things over the years, whether it be uh, Bobby Brown, uh, Bobby Jackson, I'm tripping, <laughs> Bobby, <laughs> Bobby Jackson or P.J. Brown, you know what I mean? Some of my vets, all the way to Gennaro Pargo, Tyson Chandler, David West, all these guys. I've had so many people who have taught me things, and I just, I, I, it wouldn't sit right with me if I just kept all that knowledge to myself. So I just try to pass on some of those little tidbits so that they, uh, they know. You've gotten to know uh, Draymond pretty well, apparently. What would you say to his, the, his critics who say, you know, he, you know he's, he can still play and all that stuff, but he, he's not available, he, he, is, he, he puts himself out of the action too much and, and stuff like that. What, how would you address that? Yeah, that's why they sit and talk from where they at. <laughs> you know, they not playing. And, you know, everybody always going to have something to say, a pair of lips to say anything. Blake, uh, Blake Griffin announced his retirement yesterday, I think. Yeah. Were you guys able to connect? I know you two were close. And I guess when, when you were playing, did you ever think that he'd retire before you did? Yeah, man, it's crazy. Um that that was that was wild yesterday when I seen it um, cuz i mean you don't always see eye to eye with everybody or always have the kumbaya relationship but um me and Blake got a chance to talk was it last year or two years ago or whatnot and so there will always be so much love and respect there and sometimes you just have to reflect on situations and um I catch myself looking at highlights of, of Blake at times, and it's with anything, man. Sometimes you don't appreciate, you know, what it was until it's gone. And so uh, DJ texted me yesterday, DeAndre Jordan. He texted me like, "Damn, like he he was, you know, surprised or whatnot." Obviously, we all have that time, but 
you know, that's, you know, six of the funnest uh, years of my career, man. And there will never be another Blake Griffin. You know, guys on the team, it's funny, some of the young guys be asking, they be like, yo, see, what was it like? What was it like? I say, you'll never see nothing like it. <laughs> never see nothing like it. And so I, I wish BG nothing but the best um, to him and his family. And, um, man, that was a time. Yep. Appreciate it. Yep.